Can you see my slides? Yes, we do. Okay, excellent. Um, so first of all, I wanted to thank Jean, Florent, and Matteo for organizing this ecologically friendly workshop, and uh, I, uh, it was really great. I have a feeling I learned a lot during this week. So today I wanted to share you uh, some of our recent, most recent results on uh, learning of discrete graphical models, and my focus today will be on how we can use neural networks as universal function approximator to drastically boost the computational efficiency uh, of the corresponding methods. Uh, so let me start with a, with a quick reminder on the graphical models, which are useful tools for describing probability distributions that have a certain conditional dependency structure according to a given graph. Um, and graphical models have two, uh, in particular, have two uh, important properties. The first one is the factorization property, which translates into the fact that a positive probability distribution uh, can be written as a Gibbs distribution with an energy function um, which is the sum of local terms um, factorized according to the cliques of the graphs. And the second important property, which is important for structure learning, for instance, is the so-called separation property, which states that a variable condition on its neighbors is independent of the other variables in the graph. Um, so informally, we can, uh, we can pose the graphical model learning problem as follows. Uh, so we observe, we observe n independent samples from this distribution mu sigma. And, um, uh, and we want to learn its structure and parameters. So other important dimensions of the problems include the number of variables uh, that we have p. And uh, so uh, the purpose of this talk is, uh, um, is to explain things for the discrete graphical models. So we assume that each variable can take uh, one of the q discrete values. So that's the alphabet size. Um, so I put here some notable prior work in computationally efficient learning uh, of discrete graphical models, uh, which starts with the seminal paper by Guy um, on the mutual information-based greedy methods that were later generalized by Hamilton and others um, for um, more general discrete graphical models. Um, and there is also a class of uh, other uh, methods which are based on convex optimization. Uh, in particular on convex, on, on conditional likelihood and interaction screening method. The typical setting of graphical model learning is as follows. Um, so usually we are talking about a parametric estimation where we assume that we know uh, an exponential family of the distribution we're interested in. In particular, we know a set of basis functions uh, denoted here as GK which acts on subsets of spins uh, are, uh, in, in our system. Um, and what we don't know are the parameters associated with this uh, model denoted here by theta star. And that's what we want to estimate. So we observe n independent draws from this distribution and we want to recover the parameters, estimate them to a certain error epsilon. And typically we want to work with reasonable models, which means that um, we, we, we assume that the L1 bound on the parameters associated with each of the nodes is, uh, is bounded and we have a certain finite prior on it. So how does one solve this inverse problem and learns the, um, this, type of, um, this type of distributions? Uh, so one method is called generalized RISE, uh, where RISE stands for regularized interaction screening estimator. Um, and, it, uh, and so the expression is given here. So essentially this estimator operates on a loss which is given by the empirical average of the exponential of the uh, local energy terms taken with the opposite sign. Uh, this, is, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this problem needs to be solved for estimating each neighborhood of your graph or hypergraph. Uh, and uh, it is a convex function which can be efficiently minimized with uh, using entropic descent type uh, methods. So a quick intuition behind this estimator why it works can be obtained by looking at the infinite sample size limit, where this empirical estimation over samples becomes uh, the estimation with respect to the underlying measure. And with a one line of calculations, one can see, one can show that the minimum of this uh, convex uh, of this convex objective function is achieved um, at the point where uh, the parameters, the local parameters, correspond to the true parameters of the model. 
And this is the point where the interactions are essentially screened, which explains the name of the method. So of course, what is, uh, what is most interesting is not the infinite sample size limit, but the uh, finite sample analysis. So can we learn uh, reliably a graphical model using a finite number of samples? So a complete statement uh, of, uh, of our results with uh, proofs can be found in our archive preprint. But uh, for the purpose of, um, of what follows in the talk, let me just uh, state uh, the result informally. Uh, so what we know is that GRIs um, learns an arbitrary graphical model with high probability up to an error epsilon with a number of samples, which is, uh, uh, which is proportional to the logarithm of the dimension of the problem. So logarithm of the number of nodes. And uh, factor which scales as Q, which is the size of the alphabet size. So how many variables the variable take, how many values the variable take um, to the power L, where L is um, the maximum click size in our factor drive. And uh, so this can be done with the computational complexity, which is uh, P to the L. So dimension of the problem uh, to the power of uh, maximum interaction order that we have in our model. So, so far I gave kind of a very general statement. So let me give a concrete example. Uh, so let us work for the purpose, uh, for the sake of simplicity, let us work with the binary variables, um, which takes values minus one and plus one. So typically if we don't know what the distribution is, one approach would be to set uh, a complete um, basis function hierarchy, which can be, for example, a monomial basis functions which corresponds to different interaction orders, which is very appealing in physics. And then we could uh, try to model our distribution by uh, progressively adding higher and higher orders. So we can start with the first and second orders, uh, which corresponds to the, um, to the famous sizing model. And then we can add three body interactions, four body interactions, and so on, up to a certain order when we are happy with our choice. And uh, the interaction screening loss for this case would take the following form. So to estimate the neighborhood of um, uh, the neighbors of the variable i, I will need to solve this convex optimization problem where the loss function is given by exponential um, minus and all terms from the energy function, which contains a variable sigma i, which we refer to as local energy. Uh, and so as stated by the theorem that I announced before, uh, so for the interactions with uh, L body uh, interactions, the computational complexity scales as um, P to the L uh, up to logarithmic factors. So this is a very reasonable approach and it's, uh, it, is, uh, uh, it is very appealing in physics, uh, for example, where we might know that the interactions order decays. However, if you want to go to a higher order and we have a pretty large system, um, then we see that this um, this computational complexity can, can become to scale pretty badly. And the, the problem is really that we don't know in many applications what is the right uh, basis functions hierarchy in which our representation of the energy uh, function is sparse. So the natural question is, is there a better way uh, to introduce uh, or to model this basis functions hierarchy? Uh, and this is where uh, this proposal of using the neural net parametrization comes from. It comes, it comes into play. Uh, so, so the suggestion is, uh, if you compare uh, the two loss functions that are written here, is to say that let us use uh, a nonlinear representation power of um, neural networks and their ability to approximate functions uh, and to replace this local energy function modular uh, the, um, the central variable sigma i by a neural network representation. One can show that if neural net is expressive enough, meaning that uh, in terms of function approximator, it contains this local energy function that we want to reconstruct in its uh, hypothesis space, then the global minima of this uh, neural net based uh, GRI's estimator uh, will correspond to, to the recovered local energy. And so this is a so as long as we can find the, um, the global minimum of this interaction screening loss based on neural networks, it is a legitimate estimator and uh, will reconstruct the right model. Um, 
So the entire purpose was to say that neural network somehow will explore a different uh, basis uh, basis function hierarchy. And so let us illustrate uh, this on a, on, a, on a small example. So here we take a small uh, a small model uh, on 10 variables with interaction order equal to six. And we compare these two estimators where uh, uh, so the one one the one is based on the neural nets uh, parameterization. And the second one is based on the uh, GRISE estimator with the uh, interaction order up to six. So which has the benefit of containing the energy function exactly in, this, in its hypothesis space. So what we see is that um, neural network uh, based GRISE, um, it does a pretty good job at, uh, at reconstructing the true model. So here what we've done is that we expanded the learned output of the neural network in the monomial basis, which is a very expensive operation, but can be done for a small uh, for a small model like that. And so we see that indeed, uh, so neural network explores a different basis function hierarchy, and so in particular, um, um, it contains higher order uh, interactions, even beyond order six, and then basically progressively learns to set them to zero. And so um, the um, as as a result, it uh, it gets uh, it it learns the local energy function uh, pretty accurately and using a small number of parameters. So in fact, this advantage uh, of using a different uh, a different basis function hierarchy is more apparent when we move to slightly larger problems. So by simply increasing the uh, the previous problem uh, size from ten to fifteen. Um, we can quickly realize that uh, the fully general model on binary variables with uh, up to six order interaction, the monomial basis contains around 3,500 terms. And, uh, and, and so basically we have to solve all the way convex uh, optimization problem, but still involving a large number uh, of uh, variables. And so GRISE quickly becomes intractable and it's, you, you cannot uh, run it on your, uh, on your laptop. Um, and uh, uh, so if we compare the performance of the learned uh, conditional distributions from both of these models, and we can do this by sampling from both and comparing them in the total variation distance, um, we see that neural network, uh, our basis representation essentially achieves, um, as achieves the, uh, the, uh, the best possible error, which is due to finite sample uh, size. And it is doing this with only 30, uh, uh, with only 350 parameters and using less number of samples. So um, for this problem, what was the most, what was feasible for us was computing GRI's model up to order four. And we see that it is, uh, it is obviously um, results in a, in a worse conditional distribution. Um, so the takeaway here is that, uh, is that, uh, um, using uh, using neural network as a universal uh, function approximator, which can uh, figure out the parsimonious basis, is uh, can be very valuable, uh, and uh, it boosts the computational efficiency, um, and also sampling efficiency of the of the algorithm. So one interesting uh, and important thing to note is that by uh, by approximating the energy function with this uh, implicit neural network representation, we do not lose the attractive features associated with the original estimator. In particular, um, one illustration is the application to the structure learning problem. So can we recover the structure of the graph? Um, so it's, the inspiration comes from the separation property of graphical models that I mentioned in the beginning, um, which says that um, I'm, I'm trying to estimate the neighborhood of my, uh, of my node U and the variables V which lie outside of this neighborhood, they should not influence the output at the interaction screening minima. So we can exploit this fact uh, by imposing a regularization uh, on, the first, uh, on the weights of the first layer of the neural network, which will force uh, the, the, uh, the algorithm to set uh, these couplings to zero the weights inside neural network to those variables that are not in the neighborhood of the graph. And uh, this is the illustration of this procedure uh, on a graph with uh, on, on, on a graph where you see that the edges that are not present in the graph, um, the corresponding weights are set to progressively set to zero during the learning phase. And, uh, um, and, and the couplings that are present, um, the edges that are present, they remain um, in this representation. 
So, uh, so we can do structure learning with the neural network, a representation of the basis function. So to summarize, uh, I've talked about two estimators. The first one is GRIs, which is a convex estimator for learning general discrete graphical models in an arbitrary parametrization, and which comes up with rigorous guarantees. And in fact, if you uh, if you look closely to applications to previously known subcases such as Ising models or pairwise POTS models or binary models with uh, with multi-body interactions, in all of these cases, uh, the sample complexity of GRISES improves upon previously uh, known methods. Um, and I've also talked about the uh, neural net based uh, uh, generalization of the GRISE estimator, which is uh, which which provides a computational boost to the learning problem. Although it is it becomes a non-convex estimator, it uses the nonlinear representation power of neural nets to explore parsimonious basis hierarchies. Um, and the good thing is that um, neural network GRIs still um, maintains these attractive features of the uh, original GRIs estimator. In, in particular, it can learn the structure of the MRF. Um, with some suitable modifications, it can parameterize and learn the full energy function of the model. And finally, it produces the conditional distributions that can later be used for resampling from the learned model. And I have presented several examples of this uh, in the in the numerical session. Um, so you can you can um, read more about this um, in our archive preprint. And uh, with this, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have uh, during the Q and A session. Thank you.